Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Let's uh, start our next eon. So here we start with our next eon. It says about to converse well. So it is basically about a good conversation bridges distance between a people, induces life with pleasure and sense of discovery. I guess the whole passage, whole eon essays is about uh, the good conversations. Let's see what's in it. And it is written by the Paula Miranz Cohen. So let's start the reading. Let's start reading the first paragraph. What is good conversation? Mix opinions, feelings, facts, and ideas in an improvisational exchange with one or more individual in an atmosphere of goodwill. It inspires mutual insights, respect, and most of all, joy. It is a way of relaxing the mind, opening the heart, and connecting the authentically with others. To convert well is surprising, humanizing, and fun. Ever is my definition of an activity central to my well-being. I trust my pensions for good conversation to my family of origin. My parents were allowed and appear native people who interact and quarrel biosterously with each other. I realized that such an environment could give rise to taciturn children who see quite above all else, but for me, the, in, this atmosphere was stimulating and joyful. It made my childhood home a place I love to be. I think uh, here the, the, the whole passage is about the experience of uh, author during her childhood and the atmosphere of author's childhood home. So I think uh, the best future title of this passage is describe, uh, the author describing her home environment. That would be, and what bullet point I can take it from here is, I think uh, here. Opinionated people who interact in Quarrel vastically with each other. Uh, chill, 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 chill. Yes. I think uh, what I can uh, take from here is opinionated people who interact and quarrel vastically with each other generally have chessy tone children. This I can take it from here. Just moving forward to the next passage. The bright ongoing talk that pervaded my growing up was overseen by my mother, a woman of great charm and energy. She was the maestro of dinner table, unfailingly entertaining and fun. We loved to listen to her tell stories about what happened to her at work, she was a high school French teacher, a position that afforded a wealth of anecdotes about her students, misbehavior, eccentric wardrobe choices, and mistake in the conjugation of work. There were also the interview among her colleagues, how I loved to be privy to my teachers spectacular and romantic misadventures, an experience that showed a lifelong skepticism of authority. My mother had the gift of making even the smallest detail of her day vivid and amusing. So here is uh, author basically talk about her mother, his or her mother. How her behavior and everything was the nature of her mother. 
so here there are a few words which are quite difficult like uh, picadillus you know like picadillus like the catalyst so i don't know the meaning but it's kind of a mistake or something uh, some kind of mistake because as we read from this line how i love dream free read to my teachers picadius and romantic misadventures means something called fault or something mistake this i can comprehend from this particular paragraph so uh, the best suited title for this paragraph is author describing about his her mother behavior and the pick up line i can take from here is she was a master of the dinner table and uh, before that a woman of great charm and energy this i can pick here and she was a, a master of dinner table and the another one is from here and it don't about her student misbehavior she is um, i can take from here is and it told about her students and colleagues behavior this i can take and the another one is from here gift of making give the smallest detail her day vivid and amusing that is uh, i can just write it that expert in making the smallest detail vivid and amusing that's all from this passage let's move in forward to another one my father by contrast was a very kind of talker sorry sorry let's start again my father by contrast was a very different kind of talker a scientist by training and vocation he had a logical detached sort of mind and he liked to discuss ideas he had theories about things why people believe in god the role of advertising in modern life by women like jewelry and so on i recall how he would clear his throat as to prelude to launching into a new idea i have been thinking about why we eat food like oysters and lobster which aren't very appealing there must be an evolutionary aspect to why we have learned to like these things being included in the development of an idea with my father was a deeply bonding experience the idea of ideas became enormously appealing as a result and though my father was not an emotional person and indeed because he was not i associated ideas with our relationship and they become imbued with feelings so uh, here as you can say that the passage is start with my father so it must be a whole passage about his author father his behavior his beliefs and what that effect on the author so here i can give the suitable title as ever the author describing about his her father's behavior or his her father this i can just get the suitable title of this particular paragraph and the picky line i can take from here is he has a logical detached sort of mind i think i can take uh, the whole line as it is whole sentence he had a logical this detached sort of mind and he liked to discuss ideas this i can take 
and another one is that uh, from here that he is emotionally uh, he is not an emotional person not an emotion not an emotional person I can take it from here. Let's moving forward to another parent. It's such a small one, so let's complete it, read it quickly. Perhaps my family was exceptional in its love of conversation. But all families are, to some extent, learning space for how to talk. This is the paradox of growing up. Language is learned in the family. It solidify our place within but it also allows us to move beyond it, giving us the tool to widen our experience with people very different from ourselves. As we can just uh, get it from this process. So here author is talking about how the language is first taking place, the second step in our each and every child life from home itself. So I think uh, there is no need to give a, a, a title to this particular passage or we're taking a bullet from, from here. I can just summarize the whole passage from taking some lines from here that is from here. From all, all this part, I think uh, I write down. I think I request you guys to write down uh, the whole sentence which I am creating right now. That is, language is learned in the family, solidifies within it, allow to widen our experience with other people. I think that's it for this passage. So moving forward to another one. My family inculcated in me a lifelong love conversation of sprightly, sometimes contentious, but always interesting talk that allows me to lose myself for the space of that engagement. My pleasure in conversation has lead me to think about the activity at length from both a psychological and philosophical perspective. What makes a good conversation? What role has conversation served in history? And what does talk to uh, do for us? And how can it ameliorate aspects of our current divided society if pursued with vigor and goodwill. I think there is also no need for any uh, giving a title or taking a bullet from this particular paragraph as well. So I am giving you summary of this, sorry, of this passage. So I request you all once again to write the summary of this particular passage. It's author is talking about role and effect of conversation in our day-to-day -day life. This I can just comprehend from this whole particular passage. Let's move forward to another one. Sigmund Freud began his groundbreaking work as a father of psychoanalysis by postulating that his patient's symptoms were physical responses to traumatic events or taboo desire dating from childhood. He found that if these people could be encouraged to talk without inhibition to free associate on what they were feeling, they would eventually find the source of their problems and the cure for what ails them. With this in view, he made talk central to his therapeutic method and hence the talking cure. The whole passage is talking about one of the physioanalysts 
Fuge, uh, Sigmund Fuge, who is innovating an idea of talking cure, which helps his patients to come out from the childhood trauma. So I'm giving the title of this particular passage is Authors, uh, sorry, Sigmund Fuge Innovation for Curing Childhood Trauma. This, I, this is the perfect headline uh, title of this particular passage. So moving forward to the bullet point. I think uh, there is, I have, uh, there is a line, I can pick it from here. So I just summarize, I also, I think there is summary needed. There is no as such a uh, bullet point I have to take. There is summary I can give you. So I request you guys to note down the summary of this particular passage is a talking cure helps people to describe their childhood trauma freely. And this innovation finds the source of problems. That's it for this passage and moving forward the another one. Although Although many of Fuge's theory have since been refuted, the, taking, the talking cure has endured. Clinical psychologists still recommend talk therapy as a treatment for both generalizing anxiety as well as more severe mental health issues. And though Fuge's talking cure is not by any stretch a real conversation. The patient talks, the analyst listens, and strategically intervenes the phrase talking cure, strike me as a useful one in a referring to the nature and a use of conversation in our life. So I can uh, just, uh, uh, there is one word here is, that is quite, uh, I don't, I know, but I know the meaning of that particular word. This one. Although many of Fuge's theory has since been refuted, if you are looking to this whole sentence, if you're looking the whole sentence, you may just uh, get an idea that this word is something negative. Indicate something negative. It's not a positive word, but I know the actual meaning of word is that uh, if something wrong is proven as saying something wrong. So I will give you guys a summary of this whole passage because this passage don't need any particular title, and we're taking a bullet from point from them. So please note down the summary of this passage. It would be. Fruit talking cure is a painful, it's a process where patients talk, analysts listen, and strategically, strategically intervene. That's it. That's all I can take it from here. So moving forward to another one. The next paragraph. The need for conversation is one that many people have not fully acknowledged, perhaps because they have not had occasion to do enough of it or to do it well. I am not suggesting that in conversing we serve as each other therapist, but I do believe that good talk, when carried on with the right degree of openness, can not only be a great pleasure but also do us a great deal of good, both individually and collectively as member of society. Here the authors are talking about there is not necessary need to go to the therapist uh, to understand our words and our problems. Uh, it is also a good talk, good conversations if we found someone whom we can openly uh, tells our problem, that would be a, a great thing to uh, a great thing, a great place so that someone can open about their problem to someone. So this 
professors also don't need any particular title and taking a bullet point. It's just need a, it's just summarized. I just summarize this passage, so please note down. Author suggesting about how good conversation works where the conversation is fully acknowledged with right degree of openness. So moving forward to the another passage. For me, one particularly useful concept derived from Thute's talking cure is the idea of transference. In the course of therapy, Thute found that some patients felt that they had fallen in love with their therapist, since he believed that all love relationships recap recapitulate what occurs within one's family of origin. He saw this patient infatuation as a repetition of earlier intense feeling for a parent that could now be analyzed and controlled directly toward more productive and transparent end. Here, uh, the best title for, uh, here I can, uh, the best head, uh, title for this particular passage is Brief About the idea of transference, where the author is talking about the idea of transference. And the bullet points I can take it from here is this one. All love relationships rapidly that occurs within one's family of origin. This as it is, I have taken. The meaning of rapidly, I think most of you guys know that it means repetition. And another one is I have taken from here the patient's infatuation. Patient infatuation as a repetition of earlier intense feeling. That's it from this process. So moving forward to the next place. For that, let's read what the next place, next series of passages contain the main points. So let's start reading. A relationship can be over once, consummate in the sex. But friendship are not over after a good conversation. So if you're here uh, seeing the word consummate, uh, if you guys follow Word Power Made Easy by Norman Lewis, you can just get this word in, I think in 14 sessions of Word Power Made Easy. Uh, I think it's top thing, uh, that session is about types of liar. Consummate means complete. So let's move forward to the first thesis of this particular topic. I think this idea is relevant to our understanding of conversation as an important activity in connecting with others, putting aside the familiar baggage that you say saw as accompanying transference, a deep sense of affection seems to be always part of good conversation. Surely, readers can identify with that wailing up of positive feeling that almost falling in love with someone that they engaged with in an authentic way. I have felt this not only for friends and even strangers with whom I have proving conversation, but also for a whole class of students where it can that the group has more into one deeply love ever than love with the body. The, uh, the headline of this passage is how conversation is connecting people. I think uh, the important point I have taken from here 
is uh, the bullet points I have taken from here is this one a deep sense of affection a deep sense of affection I have taken and another one is this one welling up of positive feeling I think nothing I can take from this whole page it's moving forward to the another person if love can be understood as important in conversation, so can desire. Another element central to Fuchs' thought, sexual desire has its examination in the sex act, a form of closeted account for why a poet like John Dilley, among others, used death to refer to sexual climate. Conversation by contrast does not consummate, it's merely stopped by arbitrary necessity. One may have to get across town for a meeting, pick up a child from school, or generally get on with the business of life. Such in ending are in media ways. So to speak, or mind narrator. I find it interesting that a relationship can sometimes be over once the partners have consummated it in a sense. But friendship are never over after a good conversation. They are sustained and bolstered by it. The meaning of bolster, the meaning of bolster here is support. Okay, so I think this whole passage also needs a summary, not a title or bullet point. So just note down the summary of this passage. The whole passage is the conversation by contrast does not consummate. It merely stops by arbitrary necessity. Friendship never over after a good conversation. They are sustained and bolstered by it. I think you guys can get it from where I have taken this uh, point and where I have summarized this whole process. Let's move forward to another process. It is a quite shorter one. So here it is. We search for satisfaction by our desiring self seems to me at the heart of good conversation. We seek to fill the lack in ourselves by engaging with someone who is other, who comes from another position, another background, another set of experience. Everyone, even taken in a certain way, is an other by virtue. There's nothing ever of having different DNA to recognize this difference and welcome it is the premise upon which good conversation is spent. I think that there is no need for the giving a title or taking a bullet point, point from this particular paragraph. We just summarize the whole passage. So the summary of this passage is recognizing the difference of others and welcome it is the premise upon which good conversation is built. That's it for this thesis. So moving forward to the further thesis. Conversation also helps us deal with the human fear of the unexpected and the changeable. The talk with others allow us to practice uncertainty and open endedness in a safe environment. It offers exercise in extemporaneity and experiment. It deconverts us from rigid and established form of belief. There is no better antidote for certainty that ongoing conversation with a friend who disagrees. So this, like uh, ever, this passage also need a summary. So the summary of this passage is 
conversation helps to practice uncertainty and open endedness also exercises extemporaneity and experiment deconvert us from rigid and established form of belief that's it for this thesis let's uh, moving forward to the another thesis this one is so good so small so we can quickly finish this so the good conversation is an art that can be perfected and the best way to do this is converse regularly with a variety of people as a fat man says to sam spedel in dishili hamlet's novel the natural the malty sea falcon 9030 talking sometimes you can't do it judiciously unless you get in touch So the summary of this passage is: Good conversation is an art. Best way to practice this is by converse regularly with a variety of people. That's it for this passage. So this is the smallest. line or just one sentence let's read it quickly the next best thing to practice in conversation is reading those authors whose writing seems to channel the spirit of good conversation or give insights into its mechanics i think uh, it's a recommendation from the author for uh, improving our or practicing the conversations let's moving forward to the another passage how can life be worth living which lacks that repose which is to be found in the mutual good will of a friend what can be more delightful than to have someone to whom you can say everything with the same absolute confidence as yourself rod the lawyer and orator michael stilius cicero who lived in ancient rome in the 4th century bce so summary of this thesis is it's just two line i don't know things is some be needed the questions of marcus tullius about friendly conversation this can be the whole passage summarized by this so let's moving forward to the another thesis Expanding on the subject hundreds of years later, in the 16th century, was Michael de Montaigne, whose pioneering work in a personal essay form is, in its intimate and enduring style, a tribute to his love of conversation. If I were not compelled to choose, he writes in the essay. on the art of conversation which addresses a subject directly i should sooner i think consent to lose my sight than my hearing and my speech when feel the pathos of this statement given that montaigne lost his most cherished friend antony de lebotti at an early age and never ceased to mourn that in it some feel that the loss of laboti by depriving montene of his campaigning in conversation account for the essay written to fill that void here uh, the summary of this passage is michael de montene attributed his love of conversation in his essay which is uh, on the art of conversations where he can describe his love for his friend and the always uh, never dies even after the death even after death of his friends 
kept he kept in his conversations let's move in forward to another person the 18th century was a great age of conversation samuel johnson jonathan swift oliver goldsmith david hume joseph addison and henry fielding are among the vulnerable author of the period to provide commentary on what they consider to be important for good job the literary club in london frequented by many of the preliminary is said to have been organized in 1764 to help johnson from scumbing to depression through conversation among the other things so the summary so the meaning i'm just giving you the meaning of uh, the two words here first is preliminary if you just read the whole sentence you can just find it out this uh they are specific to some great people so some uh, same group of people we can comprehend from there and another one is scumbing which means a uh, loss of determination and the summary of this whole passage is author is listing down the great luminaries of literature in 18th century so moving forward to another series of passages so let's uh, first read what that for the series contains the convo so we can start from here the conversation was one of the activity that an aspiring gentleman was expected to learn moving forward to the next passage the book the words that need us 2021 by akhil reed amar on the founder of the american republic makes the point that the american revolution was successful in mobilizing desperate desperate people to its cause as a result of long and proving conversation among constituents across the colonies the british were fated to lose the war amar argues because jos tree refused to listen let alone converse with this american subject so uh, the main so the summary this passage contains summary so the summary of this passage would be the book the word that made us 2021 american revolution was successful in mobilizing disparate people to its cause as a result of long and probing conversation among constituents across the colony means uh, the whole this this lies i can copy paste so moving forward to the next passage in the 19th century especially in the united states they are shaping the self alongside shaping the country became something of a national obsession conversation was one of the activities that an aspiring gentleman was expected to learn bc publications of numerous adequate books during this period the Titles like Manners for Men, eighteen ninety seven, The Gentleman's Book of Ethics and Manual of Politeness, eighteen sixty, and Hint on Ethics and the Usages of Society, with a glance at bad habits, eighteen thirty four. All of which give guidance on conversation. Though mostly of utilitarian kind, 
the summary of this passage would be, and it is not just a summary, we can just comprehend from here. In 19th century, this are the book of inventions, a book of uh, books. And uh, why these books are for aspiring gentlemen. These books are written for the purpose of aspiring gentlemen. That would be, and we don't need to take much of the data from this particular paragraph. So, moving forward to the next passage. In the 20th century, the most notable figure in conversational self help was Dale Carnegie, who created an entire industry out of teaching aspiring social and business climbers based on his most famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, 1936. Carnegie began writing and giving courses in the 1910s, and his business revived him to grow into an empire. Over 200 offices in 86 countries, according to Forbes magazine in 2020. With supporting textbook, online research, resources, newsletters, and blogs that boast the tagline training options that transform your impact. The message dovetails with the US myth of upward mobility and getting ahead. Carnegie's self improvement program have an offshore in the self-realization movement of the past few decades. A deluse of book in recent years link conversational skills to creative and relationship goals. So you can just read this passage to have an idea that the whole passage is about Jill Carnegie's book, world famous book, which we still read, How to Win Friends and Influence People. So I'm giving you, and there is one uh, important word here, which is where is that word goes? Here, devotion. It means to cause something to fix or exactly together. So, uh, the headline of this passage would be about the tale Carnegie's self improvement program and books. And uh, the line I have taken from here is not this line, it's a summary about the tale Carnegie's self help improvement program and book, the Carnegie book and program help to create conversational skills and relationship goals. See, I think this line, let's see, we can comprehend from this line only itself. So moving forward to the next lesson. It's quite longer. Having surveyed the abundance of literature and conversation over the past two centuries, I find myself particularly charmed by a short but entertaining work, The Art of Conversation, 1936 by Milton Wright. The book is full of citations from philosophy and literature with thumbnail sketches of the ancient symposia and the talker of old England, while also exhaustively outlining conversational scenarios. In one case, the author describes a wife explaining to her husband how he should converse over dinner with his boss about his love of fishing and pipe smoking. Wright gives a verbatim account of the wife practicing the conversation in advance of dinner in a chapter 
of developing Vitachi. Writes gives Millet instruction on how to come up with a clever thought and insert it into conversation advisingly. It must be prompt. It must seem impromptu. It must be based upon the same thematic quality thought. It must outshine the original remark. The author advised practicing imaginary scenarios so as not to suffer. Lepis, le spirit, de elicalio, a carefully defined for a reader. You think of a scintillating remark you could have made that there if only you had thought of them. The book has sections on using flattery, shaking an opinion, and how to let him read his talent. This whole passage is talking about how to influence someone. Means how just uh, we are just doing creating a replica, not just replica, some scenarios before we're talking to someone. So the best title of this uh, passage is The Brief Discussion About the Art of Conversation. So I have taken the bullet points from here. Citations from philosophy. This line, citation from philosophy and literature. And another one is from here. Advice practicing. Ed Advice practicing imaginary scenarios so as not to suffer illustrated the scale. That's it from this passage. Moving forward to this next paragraph. The book's erudition, combined with its unadorned acknowledgement of human vanity, is charming. It is perhaps no coincidence that Bright remind me of Baldessari, Castiglino, and Niccolo Machiavelli in his stone. They too were writing at the high point of their civilization, by both astute about human nature but optimistic about how the individual could rise through deliberate study and strategy. And yet, even as a right explained the levels by which one can manipulate others to become a successful conversationalist, he ends on a surprisingly moving note that undercuts his own lesson. If you can forget about yourself, then you have learned the innermost secret of art of good conversation. All the rest is a matter of technique. So here, the top, uh, title of this paragraph is Technique of Baldessir Catisgue and Nikuri mischievous mischievously so and the bullet point we are taking from here is astute about human nature but optimistic about how could the individual could rise to deliberate study and strategy this first top uh, bullet point I have taken from here and 
the another one is from here one can manipulate other to become successful conversationalist this i can take from here that's it for this practice let's moving forward to the another practice i love this book for its unbashed willingness to put forward this contrast Contradiction. One can make one's conversation better by following certain instruction about listening well and employing choice, opening gambits, transition, and techniques for putting one's partner at ease. One may even practice departing, but the secret of conversation, that of forgetting oneself, cannot be taught. It is a kind to the double bind. That psychologists refer when someone tells us to be spontaneous. The admonition goes against the grain of what is involved. A state of being that happens by being swept up in the flow of the moment. So, firstly, there is one word. Whose meaning is important? That is admonition. As you can read from this whole sentence, the admonition goes against the grain of what is involved. So the meaning of ad uh, admonition here is a piece of advice. And the title of this whole passage is. Contradiction of book out of conversation. So it is a contradiction, and what we can the bullet point we have taken from here is listening well and employing choice, opening gambits. The first one is here, and the second one is practice the party, and the third one is here. Secret of conversation, conversation that forgetting oneself. This this whole line, which is copy paste as this. Now moving forward to the another next passage. Ideally, one would want to converse with someone who is open and trusting, curious and good with words. But this is not always the case. And it often takes ingenuity and persistence to jumpstart a good conversation. It is also a mistake to write off others simply because they don't share your politics, religion, or superficial values. While it is true that partitionship has become more pronounced in recent years, I don't think this is irreparable. So, uh, uh, there is no need to put the headline and take uh, the bullet point from this passage. So, I just simply summarize this passage. So, note down the summary of this passage. It is in good conversation. We don't write up others simply because they don't share the same politics, reason, or superficial values. That's it for this passage. Let's moving forward to the another passage. Next passage. Proving and spirited engagement can break apart ossified pattern of thought and bring to bear a more generous and flexible view of things. I have experienced the exhilaration of having an insight in the course of a conversation that doesn't fit with my pre-existing idea, and of connecting with someone I might otherwise have written off. Most of us fear talking about important subjects with people we know disagree with us, much like we fear talking to people about the untimely death of a loved one. And yet, this conversation are often secretly what both parties crave. So, uh. The summary of this passage is 
exhilaration of having an insight in the course of conversation that didn't fit with pre-existing ideas, which I have taken from here. That's it for this essay. Now moving forward, another series of the essays. Let's see what the series is about. We discover new elements in our nature as we converse. Okay, so let's move forward to the another essays. Finally, there is the creative places of conversation. If writing and speechifying can be created with sculpture, where one's model sometimes the word in solitary space. Conversation is more like those team sports where the team proceed within certain parameters. But it is unpredictable and relying on one's ability to contaminate with another person or persons. What in conversation can be arranged in infinite ways, but they wait on the response of a partner or partner, making this an improvisational experience partially defined by others and requiring extreme attentiveness to what they say. Also, like sports, conversation requires some degree of practice to do well. The more one converses and with a variety of people, the better one gets at it and the more pleasure it is like to bring. So headline of this passage is creative pleasure of conversation. And the bullet points are here. The conversation can be arranged in finite ways. The first one is here. And the second one I have taken from here. The weight on the response of partners or pa a partner or partners making this an improvisational experience partially defined by others and requiring extreme attentiveness. That's it. It's moving forward to the next process. Since conversation is by definition improvisational, it is always bringing the four newer or unforeseen aspects of oneself to fit or counter or complement what the other is saying. In this way, we discover a new element in our nature as we converse. Over the time, we incorporate aspects of others into ourselves as well. So the summary of this whole passage is conversations brings forth new or unforeseen aspects of oneself to fit, counter, complement what the other is saying. That's it for this passage. Let's move forward to the another to the next passage. One could say that in the flow of conversation, the distance between self and other is temporarily bridged. Much as happened in a love relationship, it is a sometimes hard to recall who said what when a conversation truly works. Even when people are very different and stand ostensibly on different sides of the issue. So the summary of this passage is conversation the distance between the self and the other is temporarily brisk. That's it. And moving forward, the last pieces of this Eon essay is the conversation is both a function of and a metaphor for our life in the world. Always seeking to fulfill a need that is never fulfilled, but whose quest gives frequency and satisfaction albeit temporary and incomplete to our encounter in good conversation. There is always something left out, unplumbed and unresolved, which is why we seek more of it. So firstly, I will give you the uh, definition, meaning of this uh, word, frequency. Frequency is nothing but interest and excitement. 
and the summary of this whole passage is in conversation there is always something left out and unplanned and unresolved that's it thank you very much for being in this journey hope you see you guys soon.